All right then, so now we have Flutter installed. The next step is to create a brand new Flutter project. So open up a terminal and navigate to the directory you wanna create this project in. You can see I'm in a folder called Flutter Projects. And by the way, when you're creating a new project with Flutter, try not to have any directory with spaces in or special characters. If you need to use a space, use an underscore instead. All right, so the way we create a new Flutter project is by saying Flutter, then create, and then a project name. And I'm gonna call this Coffee underscore card and same goes for the project names using an underscore not a space or anything like that all right so press enter and this is going to go ahead and create this new flutter project for us all right so we can see that was really quick it's all done now so the next step is to cd into that new directory so cd and then coffee underscore card and then we can use Flutter Run to run the application. However, I'm not gonna do that just yet. What I'm gonna do is open this up in VS Code by typing code, space, and then a dot, and press enter. And this is gonna crack open VS Code for me inside this project directory. All right then, so here we go. This is our new project. Now, just a quick reminder that before you go any further, if you've not already, definitely install the Flutter package for VS Code. Just go to extensions, type in Flutter. It's going to be the first option right here. I already have it installed, but if you install this, it's going to automatically install the Dart um, extension as well. And this Flutter extension comes with extra tooling for creating Flutter applications. So definitely, definitely make sure you install that now if you've not already. All right. So then, now what I'd like to do is take this starter project that we've got right here. I mean, we don't know what any of this is yet, but it is a starter project and we can run this in an emulator. Now, to do that, we wanna make sure that this status bar down here in VS Code is showing. So go to View and then go to Appearance and then make sure you've got a little check next to Status Bar. Click it if you've not. You should see this and then over here on the right where it says Windows, this is our target device for the application. So. Currently it's Windows, but we want to select um, a different device. This one right here, this emulator that we created in an earlier lesson. This is the Android emulator. So if you've not already created an Android emulator, make sure you do that. I'll show you how to do that in the previous two lessons. So click on this right here, and that is going to launch this particular emulator. All right, and that's over here. Woohoo! So we can see now some kind of phone device right here. The Flutter app isn't showing on it. We have to manually run the Flutter application to see over here. So let me just scoot that out of the way again. And you can do this in a couple of different ways. If you want to, you can open up your terminal and you can type Flutter run. We're not gonna do that. Instead, what I like to do is go to the lib folder and then open the main.dart file and then go to this play button right over here, click on the arrow next to it, and then say run without debugging, click on this. And this is gonna start up the application for us. Now we have to do this from the main.dart file. If it's any other file, then it's not gonna show this play button over here. So I'm gonna cross off this for a second and then just bring over the emulator again, and you should see in a second, the Flutter application spin up on here. All right, and now we can see that loading right here. In a second, we should see the application itself. All right, cool. And this is the start application we get when we create a new Flutter application. Now, it might have taken a little bit longer for yours to load up, especially if it's the first time you're booting up an application on a new emulator you've recently created. But it should load after a minute or two. All right, so what I'm going to do now is just quickly resize the windows a little bit so we can have this on the right and then this on the left. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Now, when you run your Flutter application, you're gonna notice this little toolbar right here, which you can move around. I'm gonna keep mine there. There's a few different icons on here. This one is to stop the application. This one right here, this green arrow, is to do a full restart on the application. And when we do that, it's gonna take it to its original state. So it's not gonna preserve any state or data within it. By that, I mean something like this. Look at this number. When I click on the plus sign, it goes up. And that is essentially the state of this application, this number, right? It uses it. Now, if I do a full restart, it's gonna take the application back to the original state, and that's gonna go back to zero. So it doesn't preserve that number that we had. Now. This one right here, this lightning icon, this is a hot reload. This does preserve state. However, for the time being, we're not gonna be using hot reload. I will explain that later on in like two or three videos time. For now, if we make a change in the code and we wanna see that change over here, we're gonna to have to do a full restart of the application, okay? All right, so now we have a new Flutter project and we've seen how to get that up and running in this emulator. In the next lesson, I'm gonna go over just a little bit these files and folders over here and maybe a little bit inside main.dart as well, just so you've got a rough idea of what everything is.